And uh, so that's all. I've never met Yuri. <clears throat> well, so. you said you said something else. Oh, do you know that you and I are both with Best Psychics Directory? Oh, you mean at Bob Olson? Uh huh. I didn't know that. I didn't I either didn't... till uh, Janet sent me something or something, but I saw a logo on the bottom left. Maybe it was I your website. Ever, I don't ever hear much from them at all. Do you? I don't either. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's really strange, and in fact, <laughs> I don't know what this means. But, you know, automatically they charge, and I don't know that I've been charged for the past couple of months. I don't know that I have or I haven't. So well, I put I in, and then they uh, they got me a gig with ABC Television back mm-hmm. when uh, Stanton Friedman was in my life and called my uh-huh. mama and ABC Television. No, it was the producers in New York. And then uh, I did a psychic reading for one of their shows, ABC uh Wife swap, and then they said because I was accurate by doing what they wanted me to do, read this people that they had out of Chicago, some shamans. They were swapping with somebody where I lived in Kentucky. They said they got me off of LinkedIn through the best psychic directory, and I was like, okay. But then uh, I was working with Stanton Friedman, but they had me, uh, it didn't make any sense. They were videoing me at night, pointing up to you or Sky, like they were. I don't understand why where what they did with the what they put who, in the can of the video. Who was bidding? Who was bidding? It was the producers. Was the producers. Oh. I don't know who they were. They were a team that puts a little mic <laughs> on you. On you and, and, white swap. Now, well, I've white never swap, heard very much television. from them. You know, I right. very seldom do I hear anything. But but my one of my managers said I need to stay on there for the for the Google deal. So I don't know. Oh, What's okay. a manager? What kind of manager do you have? Uh, like a <coughs> California publicist or a Dallas terrible, publicist? Terrible, okay. terrible allergies. <laughs> uh, uh, me too. It's a sign well, of ET Derek, involvement. Derek's really, Derek's really my manager, but I have a, I have Carolyn who who does my website and stuff like that, and um, she's the one who helped me set up with the Bob Olson. And um, so I re- I don't even really hear from anybody, and I don't think anybody really hears much. So I don't know. Well, why don't we did, why don't we talk about something more relevant instead of some psychic like, network? We have a half hour. I like what that Saint Clair like guy. About? Time just flies when we're having a good time. Yeah, it's it, fun. So let's do something uh, relevant. Well, why don't we do this again, mm-hmm. Janet? Well, why don't we let's do up. this one? We're still on this one. We'll talk about doing another one next time. All right, off the air. We got half an hour to make it really count. Okay, hey, why don't um, we talk about the Karen, time what you today? About? I'm going to talk. I'd like to talk about the transition our planet's in right now. Go for it. You go for it, girl. You know, I think that uh, where we're, I think that people need to. I think they need to do the mask. I think they need to do the gloves. And my prediction is that if people don't watch it. It's going to come back full blast around, I would say September, October. Mm-hmm. We're in kind of a, kind of a waiting period right now. <clears throat> I think there's, I think it's terrible. Everything that's happened, you know, I saw this three years ago, and I right. told Janet that on her show. It's a long story, and I won't repeat it because it's a long story. But I thought it was, I, I did the same thing. In another out of out of space, in another star space, star system. <clears throat> a friend and I went through and, and saw this whole thing, and we were dressed up in these white things that you see in, up in the front lines in New York. And I was connecting it with military, and I was asking her at the time. I thought, how come that the medical stuff looks like military? Well, we didn't really know. Now we know because the front liners that are risking their life, the nurses, the doctors, all the health people, are really the frontliners, and we are. It's a, it's a type of a, a war. It's a war against this uh, virus. And, mm-hmm. you know, there are many reasons why it's happening. I'm not going to get into anything. I think uh, I think the politics down here have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, I think it goes way beyond that. And I think that... In, in, in a way, it's an opportunity for our planet and the people who inhabit it to wake up 
and start thinking about life, death, the path, what's beyond the theater, what's beyond the play. This is a play. It's one play, Mm -hmm. but we're eternal, we're forever. But this is one of our plays. But most people in the conventional realm see this as that's all there is, that they're that's all they're wired for. And right. so if they don't if they make light of it and don't try to protect themselves, then all their electromagnetic fields will keep producing. See, we're down in here in the middle of all this. Many people who are light workers, who are ET experiencers, we're, we've come in here for this time. And it's all having to do with the polar shift and everything, climate change, the whole thing. And the masses and their energy, in my opinion, are attracting in the likeness of of environmental manifestation of where they are. And so we're coming down here with our energies, getting clobbered, trying to help out, having weird things happen, this, that, and the other, and all the other stuff. And so we get very emotional. People who are empathic get extremely emotional and sensitive. And we're picking up, we have to be careful and keep the light around us at all times because otherwise we become a, a, a screen, like a vent. Like the vent. And we're, we're venting mm-hmm. through all these other things. So that's what, in my opinion, we're here to do. Now, how far we're coming along is far, I'm not sure. You know, I think that people, it's just like 9-11. People were really devastated in the beginning, and then it wore off oh so quickly. And so this is worse than that. And I think if people would just stay put for a while, something would happen, and then it would be over. But my concern is that they're not, and this is just kind of an interim stage, and then it's really going to get bad. And so I I do think something in the end will save it. I think that <clears throat> there will be a vaccine or it will just fade away or whatever. I don't think it's just going to fade away. But I do see there there being an outcome to it. But we're just kind of right in it right now. You know, it's not over. Well, I've got and, a couple downloads on this whenever you're ready to uh, pass the talking stick. I want the want? talking stick next. Well, I want the talking stick next because i got some downloads on this. Okay. So when you're complete, or you're complete, I don't want to Yeah, say that's just all. I, that's just all I had to say. Okay. Right. So I got it. I got two downloads this past week, or maybe one was last week. So it's about intentionality. It's not the story. It's not all this conspiracy stuff. It's about your intention. So if you uh, go out and you catch diseases and you kill yourself and kill the people, that's your intention, right? Mm, and we right. don't really know what's going on. But people are catching the disease and they are dying and they're spreading it and it's spreading like wildfires. That's and right. And it, it spreads as soon as you open up a, a city, a town, a location, their cases go up exponentially and they go up from 10 to 300 overnight. And it's like, what is going on here? So if you're going out and you're being careless, you're intending to suicide and kill the people. And that's what we work on in psychology. We go, well, some people, you know, if you're smoke and you know you're going to die of cancer uh, and yet you still keep smoking, well then you're suicidal. It's not, you don't have to put a gun to your head, you're suicidal. And if you That's know right. that you're actually going to take people with you, you're murderous. So this is karmic thing. So you can call it what you want here on this level, but when you're on the other side, you go, oh shit, I just killed myself and I just killed grandma, my daughter, and you know, my cousin, right? So you're going to, you're going to face your karma. But the other thing is that I've been studying this, but the ETs downloaded. They said, no, this is not going to go away. This is like uh, HIV and this is like the measles. So what we what this time is about is, is reconnecting our DNA. The Anunnaki turn off our DNA. We have, because we have Anunnaki DNA, our potential is physical immortality. But they, um, years ago, and, I, and I've written five books on the Anunnaki, is they did not want us to live the extreme uh, longevity because they wanted to control the planet. So they intentionally turned off our DNA. It's like on off. It's like a computer program. They turned off the longevity switch. They turned off the switch which allows us immunity to all diseases. And the other thing is they intentionally in one of their wars between Anata and Marduk, they introduced biochemical warfare. 
And a lot of this uh, stuff has been laying, has gone dormant and it's under, you know, big jungles and forests. But as we expand our population, we went, when I was born, there were 3 billion people. We have, um, what, almost 8 billion people. So we're going where we shouldn't be going. And we're stirring up these old ancient viruses. And um, they are biochemical warfare. They're designed to depopulate. And they're doing what, what they were they were designed to do. Yeah. So I believe that. I believe that. So the final thing, and then I'll pass this off to you, six, is that uh, they said, well, we've got to go in genetically and, and reactivate that physical immortality, um, extreme longevity, and immunity to diseases. Otherwise, humanity is going to get really wiped out. Like the Anunnaki, when the Anunnaki came here, their population had been devastated. And so we were their hope. So it's going to be some kind of intervention, but I think that it's going to be because deep within me, I, I have, I was a geneticist for the past life, and so I had this understanding. I don't know how to do the ABC, so I'm thinking maybe if I get in there and do a course or something, but, you know, it's really hard to wrap your head around, you know, all this stuff. No, I, agree, I, agree, head, I, agree, I agree with you on everything you're saying. <laughs> I really do. I see this. Of course, the average mm-hmm. public doesn't know what we're talking about, but all we can do <laughs> is to is to help them to see if they would just, you know, uh, put secure themselves in place, what is safety in place, or or mm-hmm. secure in place. And I never see anybody uh, whenever I go, I go out to eat a sandwich under mm-hmm. this tree, and this little sandwich shop brings it out to my car, mm-hmm. and I never see anybody. Walking around, walk, a lot of people walking, a lot of people walking their dogs. Nobody's with a mask uh-huh. and nobody's with the gloves. Right. So it, it's almost um, like they, uh, it, maybe there's a wiring, I don't know, maybe there's a wiring, but I just know that, you know, we're stable here in Texas. It's called stable from by the map. Uh, I think most most states are, but only because for a time. And then it's going to ramp back up again, probably in August and September. Right. And we so all know that. I'm going to look at the NCOV 2019 live. It's like an ongoing calculator. It shows it's updated continually. So we're at 4.6 million people uh, sick, um, or have, uh, confirmed. And then we have 308,000. Dead. We have in the United um, States, it's in the U.S., global, but the United States, the United States has one million four hundred eighty-four thousand confirmed cases, and no, oh no, I'm sorry, that's what we get right one. Yeah, here's it. Here's the United States. Um, eighty-eight thousand deceased, and and we only had one, I think, or one or two in the first. The first case that died was in February, but they didn't acknowledge it as COVID until they did the biopsy. They did the autopsy. Are you talking biopsy. about? Are you talking about in Hawaii? No, in the United States. In the United States. The first States. case was in <laughs> San Jose, and I, I, uh, Santa Clara, and and that was um, Lorian's conference, and I was calling people. I says, and I'm psychic too, right? And I said, Oh my God, the virus is there. It's there. It's there. And so nobody believed me, and I said to my friends, be very careful, the virus is there already. I said, no, it's just still on the virus. No, it's there. I don't know how it's there, but it's there. Be very careful. And so anyway, a lot of people were sick at that call, because I don't know if anybody died, but they just like two weeks ago said the very first COVID death in the United States was Santa Clara, right in the middle of February, right when I was calling them saying, it's there, please be careful, please be careful. So wow. anyway... Um, I guess how I'm psychic. I, I can't do readings like CJ does, but I just get things. And, and I well, I know it's you're sometimes psychic. scary when it's just me off. Well, people but, don't uh, like to hear about this. You know, we can talk about it among ourselves because we're all light workers, and we all have right. our DNA a little bit different. <laughs> uh, but you know, we we're, we're also down here to try to help this planet, and we're doing the best we can. And I just think we need to know that. Because I live this twenty four seven, and I know you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, so it's, it's, Texas is number eight, and Florida is number nine in um, um, in the, uh, the, in the uh, U.S. with cases. Oh. Yeah. 
I will okay. add 